If I really wanted to cause some drama, my dear, her spec and PVC heels will say otherwise. And baby girl, I want it to be Cinderella. I kind of want to rouse some people up, but not every dead dude. I know how you guys like to tussle. The fact that you said I can't wear this during the day, I'm going to find a way to wear this during the day. My first thought is, what do you mean by that? Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow here on my other social media platform. So make sure you subscribe to me here. Go ahead, subscribe, hit that bell. Also, like this video. Today, today I wanted to do a fun video with you guys, and we're just going to be talking about the fashion rules that I feel like are worth breaking. Because rules are meant to be broken, right? And also, like, why does fashion have rules to begin with? So I've gathered together some things that I feel like are fashion rules that need to be broken, and I found some other ones here and there so that we can just talk about it, we can discuss. I really want to hear you guys' view on these things. The way I feel, I feel like true fashion or true styling doesn't necessarily have rules. So with all of that, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts because you guys know I'm going to be sharing my thoughts. So let's make this a dialogue and jump in. Ooh. Just so you guys know, I just have some matcha, so I really diluted. So this is some quick updates. How you been? How you been living? How's your weekend? What you do this week? I hope you have a great week coming ahead of you. So this is a quick update. As I'm filming this video, it's been a couple of days since Keith Lee has left Atlanta. I just wanted to talk about it real quick. Some of the backlash has been very interesting. And when I tell you, I have stories to tell about eating in Atlanta. Some good and some not so good. But I feel like everyone here kind of has those kind of stories. But the one thing I want to say, based on the places that Keith was invited to go or suggested to go, I feel like his reviews were fair and actually on brand. And if anything, some of the responses we've seen kind of confirms that. Overall, honestly, I feel like some people are being very obtuse. But anyway, back to what you guys came here for. Let's dive in. So my very first rule is that you can only shop your section of the store. Now for me, I will shop the entire store. I will shop the women's section. I will shop the men's section. And I'm never too grown to try on the kids' sneakers. So this idea that you have to be confined to one part of the store, I, I don't agree with it. Next. So number two, no white after Labor Day. So growing up, I only heard this rule from skin folks, to be honest. So I thought maybe it was something that's like superstitious that I didn't know about. Kind of like that idea of not putting your bag on the floor. First and foremost, superstition aside, I'm not putting my bag on the floor because why would I put my bag on the floor full of germs and people have been walking on, people haven't cleaned and bring that home with me. And also, superstition not aside, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take my chances, you know? But when I was making this list and looked it up again, the whole idea of no white after Labor Day, I feel like it's tied to elitism and capitalism. Really, from what I've seen, this rule is based on the people who had money to go on vacation when it started getting colder. They kept wearing their summer colors. And the people who couldn't afford to go on vacation, it was a no-no. And I feel like there's more perspectives that add to this whole idea. But as for me, <laughs> I'm going to be wearing my white. But yeah, no white after Labor Day, are we, are we doing that? I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna be wearing my white. If you guys happen to have more insights, please leave them down in the comments down below. I wanna know, are you someone who wears white after Labor Day? Is it a yay or a nay? So rule three, don't mix metals. Okay, okay, what are our thoughts? What are our thoughts? I feel like as of late in recent years, mixing metals has really been embraced. And if anything, we're seeing more pieces that have those mixed metals in it that kind of just makes it easy to go about doing it. So for me, I'm totally a gold girl, but I'm not against mixing metals. I just don't do it often. What are your thoughts on this? All right, rule number four, do not mix prints, stick to one. I'll go ahead and put the disclaimer out there. If you do not know what you are doing and you try to mix prints, it is very easy to look like a clown. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But the people who know how to mix prints and do it well, I feel like they are truly fashion great and must be protected at all costs. Because it's not something easy to do. I'm gonna let you know that right now. But as a heads up, we might have something coming on mixing prints. You know, stay tuned. But are you someone who mixes prints? Are you someone who's like, I would never do it? Let me know. For this next one, I kind of want to rouse some people up. Um, do the shoes always have to match the bag? Just a question, just a question. I don't think matching your shoes to your purse is ultimately a bad thing, but I feel like if that's the only way you go about styling yourself 100% of the time, it can be very limiting. 
that's my take on it. Now I've been hearing this term get tossed around a lot this year and it's the idea of sandwiching your look. And if you haven't heard about this yet, it's like, let's say you have a white top, you have on jeans and then you have on white shoes. It's kind of like you sandwich those two colors together. Now, I don't think it's bad. But I also don't think it's a must. I feel like it's very beginner friendly. If you're just starting out, you don't really know how to kind of put things together. Another thing that I would say, just don't limit yourself to it. And another thing I will add to this, I am only 5'3", so I'm constantly thinking about cutting off my height. So sometimes I wouldn't go for a sandwich look that just me, just my personal style. Sometimes I wouldn't go for that because I feel like if I have one shade or one color like on my bottom half and then my shoes are, you know, something like the top half, I feel like that will visually cut me off in different areas. But let's say my top and bottom are the same color. I do like having an accent color at the feet or keeping it all the same tone. That way I just kind of feel more elongated. I saw a fellow YouTuber put a look together and I loved it so much. All the inspiration. I can't remember her name right now. But she had this beautiful khaki sweater, khaki bottoms, and then she put red shoes at the bottom. That's that that's what i would go for but however i'm not completely against sandwiching it's give and take give and take but not every day do sandwich okay <laughs> rule number seven you are only allowed to wear clothing the way it was intended to be worn that means if you have a button down every button has to match every button every color has to be flipped down all these things i personally feel like you do what you want with your items. In fact, if you wear your clothing in a non-conventional way or in a way that it wasn't intended to be made, I feel like that is what really adds to your style. That's what really separates you from other people wearing it the exact same way. Example number one, I had a top that I love. It had this beautiful color, a nice sheen, these big sleeves, it was off the shoulder, all the things. I got that shirt from Forever 21 many, many years ago. Many years ago. And when I got it, it just wasn't giving what it needed to do. The front just felt too plain, but the back was a tie-up. I turned that shirt backwards, and it gave me a completely different look. And when I wore it that way, it just spoke to my style so much more. Something similar happened to one of my cousins. I was helping her go through her closet, and she showed me this wraparound shirt that she had. It was also a satin material. And she was like, yeah, I just feel like it looks weird, but I don't, I don't want to feel like my money's wasted. And I just told her, have you ever thought of wearing that shirt backwards? As soon as she did it. It was all the money. So don't sleep on that. I feel like certain wraparound shirts, sometimes you can, you know, finagle those on it. Not every shirt can do this, but some can. And another example, I've seen people rework dresses into skirts and vice versa, or shirts into dresses, or I've taken dresses and put jeans or skirts on top of the dress. There's just so many things you can do. And I've seen how some people rework items that have buttons to make them asymmetrical or button them in such a way that you have pleats or ruching. So you can always rework an item. Don't feel like because you bought an item, you have to wear it exactly how it's on a mannequin if anything if anything if anything the Zara campaign should let you know you can do any and everything that you want to do under the sun because who will stop you now this next rule I feel like is a little bit older but it is you must wear heels to former events to look dressed up what are our thoughts okay you tell me tell me tell me what I can say is loafers exist flats exist Hell, even some sneakers, people wear sneakers to formal events. I'm not sure if I'm there yet, but still. And all those shoes with platforms or platforms even add a little extra something so it's not a basic shoe. So personally, it's like you could be in formal events and still look dressed up, still look put together without wearing high heels. Okay, girl. Rule number nine, pastels are only for the spring. Do I actually need to say the words of how I feel on this? Because I feel like you guys already know how I feel about color. So I'm, I'm just not. I'm just not. Now, rule number 10. You must... <laughs> All right. Rule number 10. You must dress your age. Honestly, honestly, I want to know what this means. Like, what does this insinuate? Like, this is a genuine question. Like, what is the first thought that comes to mind when you hear you need to dress your age? Like, does it, does it mean don't be playful, don't be experimental? Does it mean that you have to be serious and stoic and dress like you're going for high tea or in your Sunday best 24 seven? For me, when I hear that, my mind goes towards ageism. That's, that's where my mind goes. I can kind of understand like when people dress up kids and like designer, but it's like, baby, little man wanted to wear the Spider-Man suit and baby girl wanted to be Cinderella or Barbie. So it's like, you know, <laughs> but I'll leave it alone because I got kids. We, we gonna leave the kids out. <laughs> 
So now I'm thinking 20s and above. Like, are you trying to say that, like, people who are in their 40s can't wear the same thing that people in their 30s are wearing? Like, you know? I, I just really don't know. I feel like if you hear this, tone really matters. It really matters, like, what people are trying to insinuate when they say it, because I feel like there's going to just be many approaches to this. I think for the most part, we should be dressing in our style and we should be dressing in our mood. But since this can go so many ways, what is the first thing you think about when you hear, you need to dress your age? So the next rule is sandals with socks. And I know some people hate this, but all my folks that love wearing a Birkenstock or a slide with socks, we must unite. Like, I personally enjoy it because sometimes, depending on the socks that you add to your look, it can add another element to what you're doing. I like it. I feel like it can be another expression of your style, whether it's something casual or something a little bit more dressed up. But so long as the socks are clean. Ooh, I hate seeing a dirty sock. You know, like, people have on white socks and the whole bottom of the sock is black. Ooh, someone could post, like, a wholesome, fun video and, you know, people are dancing or whatever they're doing. The moment I see dirt underneath someone's sock, I'm clicking out of the video. Oh my gosh, I'm disturbed. I'm disturbed. So rule number 12, you can't wear sunglasses at night and you can't wear sunglasses indoors. Any takers? Any takers? And we're gonna take it all the way back. There's a time I used to hate seeing sunglasses indoors. I hated it with a passion. But I feel like for the sake of fashion, go off. Like, you gotta see it through, my boy. You gotta see it through. Even if you can't see a damn thing. <laughs> You gotta see it through. Commit to the look. Now, um, I'm not gonna say when the transition happened that I started becoming a participant of sunglasses indoors, um, sunglasses at night, um, but I'm reformed. Um, I truly understand it. Sometimes you need the sunglasses, I, I, indoors or at night. Yeah. So, now, I will say it's not as bad when you have sunglasses that are like a little bit more transparent when people can see your eyes because I like to be nosy. So here's the thing, but this is typically in the daytime because I put some blockers on, I can't see nothing. <laughs> I can't see nothing, but I'm still looking. But I feel like if you have a transparent pair, they're not as bad. But what I will say off the strength of etiquette, if you're talking to someone new that you don't know, like if there's something going on behind those glasses, like you have to have them all, like maybe you had a flare up or, you know, something's going on with your face, like a black eye or something like that. I feel like it's basic decency to kind of just slide that into the conversation if you're talking to someone new, just because sometimes it can come off a little bit rude. So there's that. Okay, rule number 14, everything must be matchy, matchy, matchy. Matchy, matchy. <laughs> For me, this is a yay and nay. Sometimes you want that all monochrome look. Sometimes you want contrast, you want texture, you want dimension, you want drama. You want to switch it up. You want to add a little bit of interest. So. So for me, it depends. What about you? Okay, rule number 14, kitten heels make you look older. If you feel this way, just say you hate my guts. You know, just say you don't like me because I'm gonna wear my kitten heels. Now to get both sides though, I think this is a yes and a no. You gotta get you some stylish kitten heels, the chic ones, the edgy ones, the classic ones. But if your kitten heels aren't giving that, I can't support you against slander because I might agree with the slander. You know, we, we just gotta be honest here. So, I think most of all, it depends on your style, most of all. Number 15, sneakers are only for the gym. Nah, and especially with the rise of athleisure looks, like this has been a thing for a minute, in fact, years. So, people are more comfortable wearing sneakers in their everyday routines, outings, all these things. And you have a vast array of sneakers. You have to have something that's very plain and simple to something that's super chunky, super loud. There are just so many things you can do with sneakers to say that sneakers can only be worn in a gym. I would not agree with that. Number 16, don't go with the trend. And I just posted my fall trends video. Now, now I feel like the idea of being trendy can go left or right. Some people think it's positive, some people think it's negative. However, for me, and I feel like a handful of people who also do fashion and styling videos here, trends just mean that style is more available in stores. So when things are trendy, I feel like that's a great time to experiment and have fun with, with styles you don't necessarily have or own or want more of. And if that trend works for you well and is a good match for your closet, that trend can become a staple piece in your closet. And if a trendy piece is already a core part of your style, 
when it's trending again that's the time you have the most buying options especially if you have older staples that you want to replace or try out different brands it's going to be available so you don't always have to go with the trend but there are definitely many reasons that people will go for trendy pieces so so these next two rules i'm just going to lump them together and i found these from an older fashion blog tape from several years back and it's the idea that navy and black do not go together and you shouldn't wear brown and black together but color combinations I feel like rules like these can be a bit exhausting and they easily become outdated. When it comes to color, you have to remember that like sometimes colors at their actual face value, they may not look good together, but the trick may be that you need to try combining them in different shades and tints and tones. I can't think of a color combination that would not work because when there's a will, there's a way. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. So, have you guys heard that? Don't put black and navy together or don't put brown and blacks together? I really wonder where that came from because now that I think about it, you actually see a lot of that in uniforms. It's like school uniforms, defense uniforms, all those things. So it's like, okay, <laughs> I guess. The okay. next one I feel like it's a Chanel quote, but I'm not entirely sure. And the rule is take off an item before leaving the house. Okay, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? I'm listening. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes and no. There are people who overdress, there are people who underdress. So you're gonna have to find your happy medium in between there. I've heard people say like a complete outfit that really shows your style has seven elements to it. So it really kind of depends. But let me know if you are someone who tends to overdress or underdress. Because if you're someone who tends to overdress, would you say this rule applies to you where you feel like you have to take an item off before leaving the house? Or... What, what what's the temperature check on that what's the temperature check let me know next rule red can't be worn to weddings i have personally never heard of this one i i had to look this one up have you guys heard of it and where i got this rule from people said you don't wear red because it takes too much attention away from the bride it also mentioned the idea of red being too sexy i would even take it a step further and say sometimes the color red is associated with being a bit too risque or there's like these connotations of something being promiscuous. You know what, now that I think about it, I actually wonder if there's some type of link between red and lingerie. I, I wonder, I wonder, I'm gonna have to look into that. And it also makes me think about the idea of like growing up, like I feel like this can be true to certain cultures. It's like, if you're a kid, you couldn't have red nails. Cause I was like, you basically asking to be a Jazabelle or a harlot. Hi Keen, I feel like some of the elements of that and me growing up extremely shy kind of played a role in why I was kind of intimidated by the color red and so I realized how good it looks on my skin. <laughs> and when I tell y'all I was shy, quick story time, real, real quick. So growing up, I was extremely shy. Like it was, it was bad. So I remember when I went to preschool, we called it Head Start here. Did you guys have Head Start growing up? Is that even still a thing? But anyway, I remember going to Head Start and my mom dropped me off. And when I tell you, I didn't speak to anyone because I was so shy. So, so the teacher was convinced that I had a mental disability. And you know what that lady did? She went and told my mama. <laughs> Mind you, my mom used to be a teacher. This lady went and told my mom that I had learning disabilities. When I tell you, the rage my mom had, the way she was ready to scatter that place. <laughs> She was so pissed. She was so pissed because I actually remember that day because the lady told her she thought I was delayed. So but really I had been in preschool maybe even over a week and I just was not talking to the other kids. But I was shy. You know how shy people operate. You talk to the people, you know how I say, I don't know these strangers. Because the same thing, like, you know, like the little kid dance and ballet classes. I took those, I talked to the girls there. Um, But yeah, fun memories. So to go off this same rule, I also saw that you should not wear black to weddings. I've never heard of this rule. You guys let me know if you've heard of that. If anything, I've seen weddings where the entire bridal party or um, groomsmen, all of them come in all black or they want all the guests to come in all black. So this is a rule that I'm like, I've never heard of it. Have you? I'm just gonna assume that maybe sometime back it was thought of as a bad omen or the idea that you only wear all black to a funeral. I don't know, let me know your takes. I haven't heard this one before, but I can only guess like those things. This next one I got from a pretty dated fashion post, but it was no denim on denim. Hell no, I would never agree to that. Baby, I'm gonna wear my denim on denim all day, every day, summer, summer. 
rule, next rule, tall women shouldn't wear heels. You know what? And here's where I'm gonna take a step to the back. And I want all of my tall people watching this video to come to the front. We're calling you, come to the front. Please, please show yourselves. Show yourselves in the comments. What is your take on this rule that tall women should not wear heels? What's your take? Tall women only. So we only have a few more left. Next rule, no sweats outside the house. And I think this is the idea that sweats are only strictly casual. What are our thoughts? But back to athleisure styling. And also this idea of people want to be comfortable. People want to be warm. So if I really wanted to cause some drama, really stir the pot, you wear your bonnet out the house? It, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. But I also, I don't think I can protect you either. But y'all y'all got the bonnet out, outside the house? I can't, I can't judge you. I, I would say if you gonna respond to this, please share it lightly because I don't think I can protect you based on what people are gonna say. Um, I would say, um, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> what can I say? Okay, I would say this. If I have the option, I prefer not to wear a bonnet outside the house. However, I've seen people when they have longer flights, they may not wear their bonnet to the airport, but, but once they're on like this five hour, 10 hour flight, they put their bonnet on and who's who's the judge really and then high key sometimes sometimes the bodies look like a chef hat sometimes it's like a beret matter of fact some of the nurses be wearing bonnets i heard nurse tiktok was upset that people was wearing bonnets to the job um so so i don't want to get anybody in trouble because i know how you guys like to tussle so let's completely forget that i talked about bonnets are you wearing your sweats outside of the house all right second to last rule clear heels are only for dancers my first thought is what do you mean by that dancers my dear perspect and pvc heels will say otherwise i feel like anybody can wear clear heels and if anything i've seen pleaser heels worked into streetwear and also some fashion campaigns so i feel like that rule has a little underlying jab towards certain dancers so that's why i feel i feel some type of way about it because what, what you trying to say and this very last one Sequins cannot be worn during the day. Again, I don't know where that came from. You guys let me know if you've heard that before, but I have never heard it. And I'm trying to think of a time that I wore sequins during the day. I can't think of one, but just the fact that you said I can't wear this during the day, I'm gonna find a way to wear it. You know what? I just thought of one. I wanna say the black designer, I can't remember their name, but they used to have these looks. Um, they were like tailored bottoms where they'd be like shorts, pants, or a skirt had these large and small sequins like scattered throughout. So I'm gonna find something like that and I'm gonna wear it during the day because how dare you tell me I can't wear sequins during the day. All right, all right. So those are all of the rules that I came up with and that I found. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are there any rules that you grew up with and still stand by or ones that you feel like need to be broken that I did not mention in this video? Please let me know down in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. If you haven't already, please go ahead and consider subscribing and go ahead and also like this video so my video gets pushed out to more people and keep telling a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend like telephone so they can join in on the fun. But yeah, I'm gonna leave a couple videos on the screen. Tell me what you guys think. But until next time, bye guys.